Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to finish off the material of Chapter 7, and uh, next time talk about the, uh, the problems at the end of the chapter. So today I wanted to talk about um, the index theorem, and this is more about uh, planar autonomous vector fields and how it can be used with Bendixson's criteria to understand a lot about the phase portrait of these types of vector fields. Okay, so remember this, what we're studying, two-dimensional autonomous vector fields on the plane. Last time we had Bendixson's criteria, and I'm going to state the index theorem without proof. Now, the in, what, what does this do for us? Well, if we have a periodic orbit, Bendixson's theorem rules them out. If we have a periodic orbit, it provides conditions on the number of fixed points or equilibrium points and their stability type that are contained within the region bounded by that periodic orbit. So in particular, inside any periodic orbit, there must be at least one fixed point. If there is only one, it must be a sink, source, or center. Now, a center is a fixed point where the eigenvalues associated with the linearization are purely imaginary, plus or minus i omega, omega non-zero. If all the fixed points are hyperbolic, can't be a center then, inside the periodic orbit, then there must be an odd number, 2n plus 1, of which n are saddles and n plus 1 are either sinks or sources. So let's see, how would we use this in conjunction with Bendixson's criteria? So here's an example. Now this example looks a lot like the one at the end of the last chapter and the one we treated with the LaSalle invariance principle. It is except, and it's a big except, we've added this extra term. But that doesn't change the, the uh, equilibrium points at all. The equilibrium, it doesn't change their location, it does change their stability. There's three equilibrium points at the origin and at plus or minus one zero. Delta, the parameter, we're going to have that be strictly positive. So let's look at stability. And we've done this before. And we can write down the expressions for the eigenvalues easily. There's a bit of algebra involved. And we can verify that the origin is a, sa is a saddle for all values of delta. And plus or minus 1, 0, they're sinks for delta bigger than 1, sources for delta between 0 and 1, and a center at delta equal 1. Okay, now, fine, we know all about their linearized stability. Why are we doing this? We want to know about periodic orbits and use the index theorem. So this is the quantity that we look at at Bendixson's criteria, df dx plus dg dy. It's minus delta plus x squared. That extra term gives us this. So we need to find regions where this term is, doesn't, is, is not identically zero and it doesn't change sign. So this expression vanishes at x equal square root of delta x equal minus square root of delta. So now we see why delta needs to be positive for this example. Um, so this, this gives us two vertical lines, and the two vertical lines divide the plane into three distinct regions, and in, we cannot have periodic orbits that exist entirely in one of those regions. They can overlap. All right, so let's look at two cases. This is going to be the case of 0 less than delta less than 1. And so we 
sorry, this is the case for <laughs> delta greater than 1. So delta, the vertical lines lie outside the equilibrium points. And then we can ask ourselves, OK, where could, where could there possibly be periodic orbits? Well, the only way we can have periodic orbits is if they overlap these regions. So I've drawn three possibilities here, and they have to contain fix, at least one fixed point. But we know all the fixed points are hyperbolic. We're, just, we're not looking at the case of centers now. So there must be an odd number in sign. So this cannot happen. These two are possibilities. And now we look at the other case. Zero less than delta less than one. So the vertical lines have moved inside the fixed points. And now what, to, what can we have? Well, this is not possible because we have to have an odd number of fixed points. We know we have to have at least one. So we can't have anything like this, even though it overlaps the region. These are possible, but this one is impossible. So in the two cases, in the, draw, in the sketches I've drawn, which is not completely exhaustive, you should think about that, uh, the middle case is not allowed because we don't have an odd number of fixed points inside. Okay, so this shows you how these two um, techniques, Bendixson's criteria and the index theorem, can be used together to, un to, un to discover possibilities for fixed points. For, for, sorry, for the phase portraits that involve periodic orbits and fixed points. Okay, we'll stop there. That finishes the chapter. And in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the exercises at the end of the chapter. So, see you next time. Bye.